Hi, good afternoon and welcome to Ilham and this afternoon's panel discussion on uh, APA Festival. Um, this discussion is held in collaboration with our current exhibition, The Body Politic and the Body. Um, one of the works in this exhibition is of course a tapestry, by, a tapestry of Justice by the artist Wong Hoi Chiong. And Hoi Chong made this work in 1998 in response to the socio-political issues that were happening in the country as a result, uh, or rather preceding the, um, the sacking and the arrest of Anwar Ibrahim. And Hoi Chong was one of the uh, group of artists and arts workers who came together uh, very quickly after the, during this time, uh, and they set up this kind of uh, organization called Artists Proactive or APA. Um, and they sort of took as their mandate uh, this idea about questioning and also about uh, sort of coming together to push for a freer society. And one of the first things I think APA did was actually establish this arts festival that went on for a couple of months from September to October. And it was a multidisciplinary kind of art festival with um, theater and uh, visual arts, music, poetry, and um, yeah, and workshops. So we have with us today um, two of the kind of organizers of the festival. I mean, among, there were quite a few of you, uh, but we have Cathy Rowland, uh, Vernon, Adrian M. Wong, and today um, um, moderating it is Sherrod Kutten. Thank you so much, Rahel Joseph from the Ilham Gallery. I just want to actually begin by asking how many of you feel that they were part of that history, part of APA, part of the Reformasi uh, period in which artists were thinking about? How many of you here feel you're part of it? Okay. I ask this only because what, as we were talking about what we would do today, um, we clearly had different memories. I actually have almost no memories. It's like I draw a complete blanket when I think about that period. And so I might ask you, um, you know, in the audience, how you remember what had happened. And I think that we also talked earlier about the purpose of this, uh, of this session. And this thing essentially is to do a bit of the excavation of that history. Uh, in the blurb that comes out on Facebook, because it's a non-partisan group of artists, and I think, well, just the opposite, that in fact, it was partisan, maybe not politically, uh, uh, in part of political sense, but it was certainly partisan in the sense that they had a very strong idea about what they wanted to achieve. And so today's um, conversation really is an attempt to begin that excavation and ask ourselves, what, what do we have uh, what are our memories of it and what we remember its purpose was and perhaps towards the end of the session we can we can ask about uh, the contemporary relevance of art activism in Malaysia especially as we face yet another political I don't know if you'd call it a crisis but at least a, a, a political moment that's demanding us to think very carefully about the future of the country and the configuration of power that we have in in Malaysia. So um, I'll just introduce myself for the, the few of you who don't know who I am. Sorry, that's a bit of a joke. Um, so my name is Sherrod Kutin. I'm a, I, I have a television show um, and I'm a, I'm a journalist. And I was a journalist at the time of the Rep for Mass year, and I think I was just a two-bit journalist and a two-bit newspaper. But okay, um, Kathy Rowland, she's been introduced to you. Founder, of course, at MalaysiaKakisani.com. Uh, Very important portal um, for uh, considerations of art, not just, you know, in terms of art reviews and stuff, but also, and then now she continues it as founder of Art Secreted. She works from Singapore. Uh, she's also editor of a collection on the work of Christian Jit, a theater uh, director called Uncommon Ground. Uh, Vernon Adrian Among is a former television star, I think when he was a child, and then uh, he's also what we call a Sarani provocateur. He's a man driven by the idea that he needs to redefine what the Eurasian community or how the Eurasian community thinks of itself. Is that true? Yeah, in a way, yeah. And he came on my show and he was all bluster. It was amazing. The ratings went up considerably. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
Okay, so let, let, let's um, let's see now. You know, Kathy. So there was a reference to the festival, but there was also that what happened before. I mean, how did even a APA or artists proactive and come together? Could you give us a bit of a? History? We're going to do this history thing first, right? So let's let's start with the history as you remember it. Um, thank you, everyone, for coming. I really appreciate you all being here on a Saturday afternoon. Um, so I want to preface everything I say by saying that I'm obviously hugely, I speak from a position that's very biased because I was inside it. I was one of the, you know, key kind of movers within, the, within a much larger group. And um, yeah, so I, 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 when I say these things, I'm speaking about them. Some of it's supported by documentation because I do have some of the documents, but a lot of it's also you know, the way I remember that time, it was a very particular time. I want to bring a, just a little bit of personal history here because I was 29 and I remember very clearly that I celebrated my 30th birthday at one of the venues for the festival. Adlin Tan, who's my best friend, brought a cake. I know she doesn't remember, right? Uh, um, so it, it, this, it, the, the weight of the time and what was happening in 1998 and what, what happened with Anwar Sacking and then how we came together is very personal for me. And unfortunately, I'm one of the few people that's been writing about it or talking about it. And I've really tried to limit what I say. But I, I do want to put that out there that I'm speaking from that insider perspective, right? So you, you can take what I say with, um, with as much um, skepticism as, as I think is healthy. Um, so very quickly, Anwar Ibrahim, I think, was sacked on the 2nd of September 1998. But there was already a kind of turmoil and lead up to it leading to that particular day. But when the sacking really actually happened, it was like an explosion, you know, in, in kind of in the country. And um, an architect called Puvan Selvaraj, who used to, who ran a kind of, um, a kind of, film salon, right? He used to screen his films at Filmnet, which is a space that he ran. He sent out a meet, um, an email saying, a meeting for Anwa, right? And it went out to a whole bunch of people in the arts community. It was very much a chaos-centered, urban, kind of, you know, middle-class, English-speaking community, although APA pulled people from various different kind of communities into that meeting. Um, from my memory, there were maybe about 30 people there. We have a list of some of the names, a sign-up sheet from some of the names there, uh, but not all of it. And we had this big discussion, and one of the things that came up was, why are we calling this meeting for Anwar? Why are we saying, why is it called a meeting for Anwar Ibrahim? You know, are we going to take sides and so on? So there was, it was not as if this meeting came together and everyone was on absolutely the same page. It was quite a contentious meeting. There was a lot of, there were questions that were raised by some people about, you know, what was the purpose of artists? There were voices that said that, you know, as artists, we should not be, um, we should not be partisan, exactly the things that you're talking about, that, you know, our one person, actually Rehman Rashid, who was the, I remember Rehman Rashid saying this, that um, as artists, what we should be doing is to make the best work that we can. That we don't necessarily need to gather as a kind of political organization to speak, that our art should speak for us. So there were different voices there. Um, yeah, so that was how it came about. Puvan then sent out an email on the 14th of September, the minutes from the meeting, and again, you'll see that, you know, a lot of questions were raised, and he kind of captured the sense that there was dissent about why we were gathered together. But for better or for worse, those of us that felt that we wanted to make some kind of a statement were the ones that activated the, the group. So we then, I don't know if you'll see it here, but yeah, that was our founding manifesto. And the name Artist Proactive, you see the spelling was very bad. Those who know me will think it's me, that I did it, but it wasn't. It was um, done on purpose because we wanted it to be a little bit of Malay, a little bit of English, and a little bit of everything. We didn't want it to, you know, be proper, right? So, you know, and the question mark was because we wanted to make it clear that we didn't take any sides. We were not for Mahathir, we were not for Anwar. We, it was asserting the rights of artists to ask questions. That we could ask any questions that we wanted. We could ask questions in support of Mahathir, or we could ask questions in support of Anwar. It feels very odd to have this conversation now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, that's it. 
I'm going to add. So the question is, um, you know, what are your memories and how would you tell that story? How would, what is the chronology? What are the main points that you would highlight in telling the story of APAS, at least beginnings? Okay, well, um, at that point in time, uh, I remember it was a really gregarious group of people, uh, many of whom were quite uh, affected by what had happened. And um, these people, mainly being creative people, had creative ways of expressing their concern. And I guess uh, the coming together of a community, at that point in time in 1998, very much, um, you could say, enabled this community, this building of a community, very much enabled by this new thing called the internet, um, actually spurred a lot of people into action. Um, we all came together. I remember it was, a, it was quite a warm night. We all sat out in the open, uh, outside in the compound, and we had a meeting there. Um, the thing, the, the, what I, I mean, like when I think back to that time, what was quite inspiring was how we all came together and we did uh, reflect our namesake, which was uh, we wanted the freedom to ask questions. And I think when, when I think back now, I think there was such a, an important kind of position to take to give us some kind of motivation to move forward. Because as artists, artists usually try to join dots. And in joining the dots, we are always asking questions. And so this seemed to kind of, in a way, affirm us even more. And I think that's what held the community together or brought us together at that time and were able to produce work with such speed and with such intensity. And it was actually quite incredible, if I you know, uh, make loads about it, okay. to have been part of that moment in our history. Do you have any details? I mean, do you remember specific people, a specific mo I mean, So, because one of the things that I think what we find now is that we don't have a f the, the complete documentation and we're relying on people's memories. So do you have specific memories of people or moments or, or maybe even debates within the community, uh, which is an assertion, right, that there was already a community or it was, as you said, being built. Um, were they debates and what were they debates about? I can't exactly remember the discussions in detail, but I can say that um, the, kind of, uh, the kind of resourcefulness that came together was actually quite incredible. I mean, it ranged from having uh, the actor studio at Plaza Putra host the uh, theater segments of the festival, which was, you have 10 minutes, um, and, you know, a full-blown theater space to, 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 uh, 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 to extend itself to the use of these artists who were in activism mode, as well as an empty shop house in Wang Semaju, I think, which uh, belonged to William Harold Wong. Uh, he had just rented it to move into as office space. And so he volunteered the space for the visual arts exhibition. So the, the kind of range of, uh, you know, uh, support and, uh, and uh, 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 you know, prov provision uh, of, of facilities to, to the arts community was, to me, I think, quite inspiring. Okay. Did you, I, I, can I'm going to get up and take something from my bag to show you all. Okay, okay. So, you can talk. Yeah. So, um, so, I'm going to play uh, like an anthropologist from a different planet and pretend I, I wasn't there. So I think alcohol in the early late 90s really did obliterate enough of my gray cells. I don't actually remember anything. But Kathy, I want to, uh, I want to ask some, some, um, some kind of obvious questions, right? Like, why Anwar? Because if I remember correctly, there was nothing about Anwar in the 90s that made him particularly uh, popular among uh, activists or even artists. And I, if I remember correctly, he was credited with the busting of the Asia-Pacific uh, Conference on East Timor. He was seen as a prevaricator. You know, he had sweet words, but he you know, didn't necessarily deliver. I mean, he wasn't, he wasn't necessarily a hero. So why, why did Anwar sacking of all things precipitate this kind of response? 
So I, I, I have the benefit of actually having the minutes of the meeting here, and I think I'll read from it. It's a little bit long. We wrote very long emails in the yeah. 1990s. <laughs> uh, so this is part of the minutes that Poovan then circulated after the meeting, and he talked about, he actually raised the fact that different people from the floor raised different questions, as I mentioned, but he says this, it's part of a long, longer thing. I quote, we are all reminded, we were all reminded that the politics of Anwar and Mahathir were not the issue. The need was to make a statement on the worsening of an already bad situation, parenthesis, as has been the subject matter of much art and social parody over the past 10 years, close parenthesis. As such, any comment made by artists would underline the fact that this latest issue is very much in keeping with an ongoing disregard for the people and society as a whole. Yeah, um, and it was noted that besides the fact that there, was, there might already be a popular victim in this matter, meaning Anwar, that that very victim was until recently well in league on many controversial decisions with regards to civil society. Right, so, so, so just to put it, in, uh, put it in context, Anwar wasn't a good guy necessarily, right? Yeah. I mean, that, and that wasn't, it wasn't like artists were sort of saying, well, one of their heroes taken down. And I think the, the point, I mean, uh, you know, there's, it was, it's been widely, widely circulated and rumored that Anwar was behind the, um, the shutdown of the um, school's drama competition that had happened for many years, I think in the, in the 80s, and was very popular. I, I've, I've never been able to prove this, but it's been told to me by, by people who are quite reliable. Um, but he's also the man who wrote the Asian Renaissance, right? So there was a point where by the 19... 90s, he had begun to rehabilitate his image. And I mean, you can use the word rehabilitate or you can choose to say that he had undergone some kind of a change. But he definitely was trying to, I guess, in a way, build up his, his uh, image as, you know, a future leader for a multicultural country by the 1990s. So I think to say that, you know, um, he was unpopular would not uh, be true. I don't think it's true I, because I, I remember that there was, that. again, this is personal recollections, but I remember that traffic was really an issue as, you know, even back then. And he did something very clever uh, at the time. He took a bus ride. He took a bus ride on public transport and it made the news. And after that, he announced that he was going to introduce bus lanes, um, you know, which is a very populist, clever move, right? Because, you know, you do something like that rather than actually put money to build and to build roads or whatever. But, you know, he, yeah, I think people forget that. But, but the big point, I think, to say is that none of us, I mean, I know myself and I know people that were involved, none of us were Anwar supporters. We were not part of the Reformasi movement because we believed in the cult of Mahathir or the cult of Anwar. We were there because we felt it was incredibly egregious what had happened. I think we were shocked by the fact that somebody... I think we were shocked that uh, somebody like our own Deputy Prime Minister could be subjected to such uh, brutal tactics. And uh, that perhaps maybe really got us all riled up. Really, um, do you think so? I mean, look, I'm just playing provocator here, but you know, uh, really, I mean, our Deputy Prime Minister, did you ever feel connected to the ruling elite in the late 90s and 90s that it would be like, uh, you know, because I know that was the official narrative, you remember, Rafa Masi produced this narrative. Now, if this can happen to the Deputy Prime Minister, it can happen to you, right? Yeah. That was the way of, that was actually the spin, right? Also, it was, it was the intensity of what was going on. I mean, like, if you remember, there were people going into the streets. Um, Anwar had the ability, he had the uh, oratorical skills to, you know, galvanize, you know, crowds. Um, I remember standing at the Masjid Nagara when he made his speech just before he was arrested. And then going to his house just after it was stormed by the special branch. And I'm sure the experiences of those moments added to my wanting to do something, um, you know, that, that really got me going and saying, yeah, I must do something. And that's why I got involved with can Papa I, and stuff. Yeah, and can I respond to what you're saying? And I think, you know, one, we use terms like political elite now, you know, at par for the course. But certainly at that time, you know, in the 1990s, we were not really theorizing those kinds of relationships yeah. in the way that we do now, right? Um, I think the other point is that my memory again, and people do, we, people think about that, ter that time as Anwar was sacked and because he was, you know, a closet homosexual and blah, 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 right? But all of us remember that it started with the financial crisis and it was really a, a, a to my memory, it was a, 
it was a political difference between them, right? Mm. It was a political difference that was triggered by the, politi by the economic crisis. Anwar was, you know, a globalist, and a, I guess you could call him now a neoliberal, neo I guess, because he was very much, you know, for falling into the IMF and opening Malaysia up to that. And Mahathir said, no, we're not going to follow that path. We're going to follow a different path. Right. right? So this was the polemics of the time. How many of you uh, were like adults during the Reformasi period and actually uh, got involved or went for a demonstration, perhaps? Because there are quite a number of young people in the crowd, uh, and I'm was interested in um, so sort of seeing who was there. Uh, okay, but, but so we, let's get put aside the the issues of how to frame the political crisis. A lot of ink has been spilled on that. Let's come back to artists proactive and see if we can um, uh, throw out some details. Like you know, Vern, it was very good of you. You remembered uh, William Harold Wong. You mentioned the Plaza Putra Actor Studio contribution. Yep. Uh, let's let's try to to get at the meat of of the artist proactive uh, uh, phenomena, if we can, uh, because in ways this is also the first draft of that history, right? I, I know many little things have been written. Sumit Mandal has uh, wrote in a collection on Indonesian and Malaysian. Uh, uh, responses to Reformasi, a chapter on artists proactive, or at least on artists in general, right? Um, so let's just help build that up. Uh, Kathy, do you have, what it would be, what would you point to um, in terms of detail that will help people understand what was, why a festival, for instance? In fact, let's just begin with this, the question mark, APA. Now, I I'm not an expert on Malay, but wouldn't it be Kanapa? I mean, why? Uh, as opposed to upper, which is what? Yeah. It was an acronym. I mean, you know, we, we literally sat down round tables and, you know, were throwing out ideas, right? And it came out, this idea of, you know, um, artists and then, oh, proactive. And I don't, know how it, I don't know how it came about, but it ended up with artists proactive first and then, oh, look, it's an acronym that says upper. And then it, you know, became a question mark. But it all... And it's also Said Jamal's... Yes, yes, uh, yes, painting. Right, right. In fact, you would see it flashed at yes. some point in the back. No, but I think Sarah, can Beverly, am I right? Wasn't that painting done in response to? I think so. Yes. So yeah, I yeah. think the our question mark came first. It was part of, wasn't part of the show. Was it? I think it, it was. Was. In it fact, was there's one slide here that yeah, shows he, it. Yeah, he you, painted you, it for the show. Hanging on the wall. I remember. I remember at the uh, William Harold Wong space. So him, him standing there with the, with the painting. Yeah. So just to clarify the thing, right? So we, in September, he was, uh, Anwar was sacked. We had our meeting. The first project we did was actually the stickers. I think there's a little sticker of that question mark. And we started putting them all over the Black city. and yellow. Yes, then we yeah. kind of told people to put them. I think, you know, everyone put them in Bangsa, right? Because we're all <laughs> <laughs> You know, maybe a few in Jalan Ipoh. Um, but yeah, so that was the first thing we did. Then the second thing we did was we, we did a, I, I, I think it was very clever. We did a couple of these kind of flyers, and so that's the obviously a reference to Judge Augustine Paul, right? Because um, he kept saying every time there would be some kind of uh, part of the trial, he would say it was relevant when it wasn't, so it was relevant. Or maybe it was the other way around. Anyway, but you'll see that behind here we had all these like kind of websites to get alternative news because we were trying to counter the single narrative that was coming out of the Straits Times, New Straits Times, for example. Um, then they had these postcards, which I think are also there, you'll see them. So it's one to, uh, it was addressed to Mahathir Mohammad, Abdul Rahim, Rahim Noor, and Judge Augustine Paul. And actually, you know, a lot of us actually wrote our IC card numbers and posted it, put it into a post box, right? So those were the two projects. And then in October is when we started, we did the APA Fest. And could you, before we get to the, why a festival, you know, was this what Raymond was saying? Artists need to respond uh, as artists. Um, yeah, yeah, I think right from the start, it was this idea that, you know, we needed to respond in a way that our tools were art, right? And um, it had to be very quick because the moment was then, so I think we organized it in three weeks. And um, we wanted it to be f across the genre. So we had visual arts theatre, we had a club event, also like a, one of the night spots in Bangsa. Yeah. We had uh, Wayang, we had all kinds of things. Yes, and it was this idea of creating a bit of a kind of buzz. I think looking back, of course, we were as absolutely a product of our class and our social milieu. So it was very, 
He was very urban-centered, right? I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't apologize for that because that was, our, that was the world that we lived in and to put something up so quickly, you know, um, I think there, were, there, are powers of cent uh, there are centers of power within that particular class group and I think that, I do feel that we were able to kind of, you know, um, give people, if not change, but at least give people some kind of sense that they were not alone with the confusion and, and the emotional kind of impact of what was happening politically. Ben, can I ask you, again, trying to get some more details out. Um, when you approached an artist or a performer or something and said, could you be part of his work, do you remember any conversations that you had, uh, any pushback, anybody who said no uh, that, that you can remember? Because I, th I think the no's are important as, important as the people who came aboard, no? Um, I wasn't the one going around asking. Uh, we, we put out an email, I think, to the arts community and uh, my, my role within Artist Proactive was actually managing the e-media um, machinery, so to speak. Uh, the mail list and, and uh, you know, somebody would send me the minutes and I'd push it out to everybody. And then, I can't remember people, anybody saying, no, I don't want to be part of this. Nobody unsubscribed to the email list? Uh, not that I remember. I think, I think generally the feeling was, uh, we're coming together as a community, uh, let's see where this will go. Um, I, I don't think uh, there was, I think somehow when I, when I, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm romanticizing it, but people felt they wanted to say something and the whole idea that there was a whole group of people who also wanted to do the same thing, uh, kind of like expedited the idea of a festival. Kathy, do, were you involved, do you remember any kind of conversations? Yeah, so I, I um, so the team that organized it was a, two administrators, and that was, I mean, you know, producers, right? So there was myself and Susie Kukatas, who was unable to join us. She was supposed to be part of the meeting today, this panel today. Um, and yes, there were people who, who was, there was a lot of fear. I mean, one reason why we don't have a lot of photographs is that people didn't want to be photographed, right? Uh, and initially, so we broke up into teams, it's a good way to organize. I mean, I think, you know, it, what was interesting was the way that we were able to organize people who really always argue with each other. So, <laughs> so visual arts coordinator was Wong Hoi Chong. Theater coordinators were Joko Kutas and Zahim Al-Bakri. Music was Saida Rastam. The film coordinator was Poovan, Savanathan, who I mentioned just now. Um, literature and souvenir program coordinator was Amir Muhammad. Poetry and wine kulit, Edin Koo. Workshops and seminar coordinator was Shalin Rajendran. Um, Sydney Tan designed all the um, event design and graphics. And Mer Mer Vernon was the facilitator for electronic media, it says here. Publicity was by um, Maya Tan Abdullah. So that was the team. But, uh, sorry. I just want to ask you, you said there was fear. I, I kind of like don't remember that. Yeah, so I was going to say that initially, yeah. uh -huh. when, when we first started off, it was the visual arts um, exhibition was going to be held at NN Gallery. I think those of you who know, is, this, is NN Gallery still around? No. Not, not as a space. Ah, okay. So Nabil, right? Yeah, Nabil. Yeah, the, the late Nabil. Who's, the late you know, Nabil. So Nabil, you know, had given the space, but he was vetoed out by his two partners, his mother and his sister, uh, if, if, you know, I was told, um, because they were just scared. So we lost the venue. Hoi Chong, I think, was then scrambling, trying to get different places to, to give us a venue. There were people who offered the space, but it was too small, you know, or too far out. Um, and so that's how we ended up at William Harold Wong's office space, which at that point didn't have lights and didn't have yeah, the air just, conditioning. Just it, a shell. it was nothing, it was just a shell. But they but pulled it all together, it was yeah, quite impressive. 3,000 square feet, and um, yeah, William put the lights on and gave it to us. Um, we had a press release of 33 artists. There were artists that said no, you know, across the board, I think across the genres, there were artists that said no. But I know for sure that I got a message very late in the day when we were about to release the press release and an email came through from Hoi Chong to say, remove the names of the artists from the press release because there's a lot of fear and they're scared. Cool. Yeah. Right. And the police came. And the police came and, and they were doing their job, I, I guess, you know, that was the special branch still with us, no, because we have no police reform. Okay, um, Vernon, since you, you, in your narrative, you talked about the internet and it was a very, very important part of uh, what was happening then to the country and I, yeah. I together with some friends set up Saxi.com and we were trying to 
document the Reformasi movement uh, using the internet. And remember, there were all these other sites. So while there were yeah. the official narratives and, and the mainstream media, as we called it, then uh, there were all the alternatives, Mahazalim, all these things also were mushrooming, right? So yeah. what, are, what are the biggest challenges for you kind of doing the e-communications? I mean, what exactly, was this the larger field that you were operating in or was it just the email list? Uh, well, it was, it was the email list mainly and coordinating with various people who were producing stuff so that stuff could go out. And whenever anybody had a problem, uh, dealing with, because it was still very new, early days, you know, dial-up modems, people that just kind of like got their first email accounts, mostly Hotmail, uh, you know, <laughs> mailboxes here jarring, mailboxes were jamming up with stuff, right? Was it a Yahoo group or something? It was an e-group on Yahoo groups, yeah, 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 and, uh, and uh, yeah, so but it was... What material went into the, those groups? Into the list? What was pushed out? Materials. I mean, uh, was it just... General like... discussions. Uh, uh, stuff that needed to be concurred with, you know, uh, like for instance the uh, copy editing and stuff like that. Uh, people would, you know, share it out, uh, get ideas back, that kind of stuff. So it was the first, perhaps maybe, encounter with electronic media for a lot of people. And um, yeah, and I, 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 with my, well, limited knowledge, I'm not a hard tech guy, but I kind of like knew roughly how electronic media operated and what you needed to do to, you know, uh, uh, take advantage of it. So, do you have was, any collaborators? Uh, no, I think I did. I have any collaborators? <laughs> this is so long ago, I can't remember. Twenty-two years ago, you know, it was just me. Yeah, me sitting at my computer, kind of like smoking twenty-five cigarettes <laughs> through the oh. night. I think. <laughs> okay, Kathy, can I come back to again? Again, to the question of context um, and and you mentioned when you read that first uh, excerpt from the email of the preceding 10 years of uh, you know of parody and artistic expression that already was signaling some sort of disquiet right so if you if um, could you help us remember what was in that 10 years because I'm also uh, and you know, no, because it, it is a, it's, it's a bit of a challenge to remember what was in the lead up to the, yeah. to the things that might have. Because um, I can't remember the before and after. Like, do you remember Ami Mohammed's kind of Decameron play? Wasn't that after? That was after. Okay, so what came before that was already in the air? Because the. Uh, I don't know if you remember, the mid-90s was a very heady period. Malaysia was full of itself. We were like this, you know, Karim Razan wrote that book and, and um, V.S. Naipaul had a blur about the powerhouse of Asia. We were also full of ourselves and the stock market was slushing with hot money, right? And if you remember the parties and the discos of the, of the days, it was all over the top. It was really vats of uh, wasabi and... Stuff like that. And then, then, then there was this terrible crash. So, uh, you know, and Mars bars were like more than five ringgit a bar. You don't remember that? It was, I, for me, it was a signal of the coming of the end. So I was like, oh my God, you know, I'll never be able to afford a Mars bar again. The, the, coming of, the signal of the coming of the end was going to Little Havana, where people would pay a hundred ringgit for a cigar and be badly smoking it. Yeah. That was a signal of the end. <laughs> yeah, right. No, that was just a signal of how unclassy we truly are as a people. I mean, that was just like, no, there was, it was, we were enjoying the world. We were buying it up, right? Whether we understood it or not. But okay, uh, do you remember some of that stuff? Does anybody remember what yeah. came before the fall? What came, what really was already in the air, in the ground? that made APA maybe much more fertile a ground than we would expect, right? Um, so for those who have just come before, I started off by saying that a lot of what we are saying here is really coming from our personal memory, which is already, you know, unreliable. And <laughs> you know, unreliable for age, but then the nature of memory. But also when I, a lot of things that I'm saying is really so colored by personal memory that you should, I'm just saying this for the people who've just come in, that, you know, it, it really, you have to, you know, put on your disbelief hat sometimes, right? Um, there's some documentation, so those things are accurate. Uh, I think, just trying to remember, I think really I'd go back to the, the, 
the crisis of the ju judiciary, right? Um, not Operation Lalang, actually, but more really... For, for my generation, it was the crisis of the judi judiciary because we were... I remember I was in university. Right. So, um, Operation Lalang is mid-80s, yeah. right? 86, 87, 87, 87. 87. 87. 87. And uh, the judicial crisis comes... This is the Saleh Abba case, right? Abbas case. 89. Is it 89? I can't remember, but I remember I was in university. I think we okay. were in... UN. And it's reflected in part in the, um, the work of Wong Hoi Chong with the wigs, yeah. uh, you know, cast in Khao Dang. I, I, I remember yeah. this. It's called the no, Tritus of the White Fact. Yeah, yeah. It's called Khao Dang. Yeah. What's it called, Rahel? Is anyone, Beverly? <laughs> the Wong Hoi Chong. Uh, you know the one. We know the one. Uh, objects, right? So they were. They, yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, so 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 there were so there were these series. Uh? Yes, after it's after. Sorry, it's after. It was not. Sorry, I'm getting a cramp, which is why I'm doing this. <laughs> you're not trying to pro, you're trying to get memories out through your calves because we all know in Asian society the calf is the the seat of all memory. Oh really? Like liver is the seat of passion. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, 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 but. Okay, I, the reason I ask this, and I think it's important to eventually tell the story, is to realize that the narrative of artists responding to political crisis of moments is actually a very long history. It didn't begin with the Reformatio era. It goes all the way back. Ibrahim Hussein, we were talking about this, uh, did that painting after May 69 and so on and so forth. Uh, yeah, the, the May 13th incident in 1969. So you've, artists have kind of responded to, to the politics of the time. What is, I think, curious about this, and I'm not quite, and I know in the 70s there were leftist groups, of the theater performances, there was something called Storm and Thunder, uh, that, uh, you know, and many of the, uh, the theater practitioners in that particular group were also then detained under the Internal, yes, Secur under, yes, Internal under Security Act. Act. So artists have tried to respond, in, not just in visual arts, but in theater and all that, and, and then have suffered the consequences of repressive state machine, machinery, right? So, okay, so, so and that's the reason I would ask, because yeah. Poovin's uh, oh, EU yeah. so, mentions the 10 years before. So I think a couple of things, and I could be wrong with this, but when, when I've looked into censorship, it appears that after Operation Lalang, I, I can't find any immediate response from the arts community in the same way that, what happened, you know, that we got together after 98, right? Um, I think that the kind of responses came a couple of, like later, a year at least later. Hoi Chong obviously made a work in response to Operation Lalang, for example. Sorry? Yeah, yeah, I think it's Warbox and Killing Tools. I think uh, Tuan Chai wrote as well, but it wasn't that kind of collective thing. I, I believe that actually when the, when after Operation Lalang, the human rights movement grew, right? I mean, that's probably when you would date Swaram and so on. Swaram comes after, yeah, so it's actually a direct response of, of, of a detainee exactly. support group, right? Yes. Yeah. So I think that then you have people of my generation who would have been quite in our teens during Operation Lalang and then were in university during the, the crisis and the, yeah, what do you call it? The judicial crisis, right? And so I think for me, I know I was politicized with that. And then I was politicized in an environment where there, were there was already a human rights organization. There were already human rights activists. You were, when I first met you, you were a human rights activist. Right? I shudder the thought, yes. but okay. <laughs> so, yeah, yes? That was Hisham Rai's turn, yeah. Because oh. when I was an intern in Valentine 98, early 98, uh, there was a fundraising for Hisham Mude, Rai's, I think. Right. Yeah, he, was, he was put into jail. No, that was 2001. I organized that. Uh, APA organized that. It's 2001. Okay, so the question is, no, but, for but the record, you know, it was Hisham I, Rais and a fundraiser for him. Let me tell you that everyone's memory is, is like that. It's like that. Yeah, we, we tend to I compress these papers. things. I can show you. Okay, and so maybe, you know, hopefully somebody doing a PhD or a master's in art history might actually do the, kindly put all these things together at some point. Um, I, okay, now the question is, where do we take this conversation? Um, uh, can I say something? Yep. I mean, like, uh, talking about what exactly kind of like s s uh, sped it up so fast. Really, it was the immediate. I mean, like, now when I think about it, like, Ahmad Fuad Osman's latest controversy um, at the Balai, the, the 
the momentum by which it gained in such a short time um, to, you know, lead to such results. I mean, like, incredible. Also, the, uh, if you remember the uh, Syed Ahmad Jamal sculpture that was taken down, uh, what was it called? Um, the response as well. I mean, like... Ah, yes, Puja Prima. Um, I think... Can you just stop the slide? Could you stop the slide? Could you just... Oh. Okay, oh, stop, it. God, stop it. Stop it, yeah, yeah. Stop it. So this is the, 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 uh, the closing party <laughs> of, uh, mm. literally the invitation said come for some Coca-Cola. <laughs> so okay, just Coca okay, so, uh, freeze it there. Okay, now, so just... You want to know who the people are. No, 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 not, but I want to just point out to people who don't know. Oh, now it's gone blank. So that is the... The painting we were referring yes. to. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah. Yeah, the Sayama Jamal painting. Oh, okay. That's, yeah, that's okay, the sorry. As I just, just because this stuff has been flashing the background, for those of you who don't know, unfamiliar, it, it, it is, it's going to be a bit confusing. So I thought we'd just freeze it and just instead of having this uh, play endlessly in the back. But it does actually, it's very instructive. We can actually name people in there. Um, uh, special branch, please take note. Okay, okay, there we go. Rafik Rashid, right? Yeah. Ivy, Josiah. Uh, and I mean, and Rafik then, Rashid, for those who don't know, was doing political parodies in music yeah. from like from the 70s. And uh, yeah. I think he conscientized a lot of young people through his work in pubs, you know? Yeah, okay, okay. so. That's Sharon. Sharon Magzani. Uh, Is that? Uh, that's, Laura, that's Laura Fun, I think, behind the red t shirt. Yes, correct. Yeah, and yes. Evelyn, Evelyn Lee. Yes. This young man without the bum. Okay, he's, uh, can you, uh, no, who this? Is that Why your interest is very one-sided? <laughs> is that Ed, very focused. Is that Edin Kuh, right? No, I don't think it's Edin. No, it's not Edin. Uh, it's not Edin. Edin is short, so. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, I, I thought we'd just freeze it because also you can see some of the artwork um, and, and, and such. Now, the... Ah, can I just say? Can I just say? Sorry. So in case you think that everyone, all the artists who put works in were like pro, you know. They, I remember Niranjan, right? He had a work, he wasn't in Singapore, at, uh, he wasn't in Malaysia at that point. I think he faxed in his work. It was a work, and his work was a fax. And it was interesting because it was like, it was trying to place Anwar and what he was trying to suggest as part of like a kind of, you know, kind of global uh, power base. I think there was kind of questions about, you know, the uh, CIA and, you know, it was it was a work that was much, much more nuanced than some of the other work. Right. Was and just to tell, for those of you uh, much younger than us, that some of us actually had fax machines in our homes. I mean, it, 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 you know, it's true. We had fax. Who had a fax machine? I had a fax machine. And I was just like a stupid <laughs> journalist. And... Uh, these were very important ways of getting information and things across, right? And we had, uh, many of us, actually this time nobody had phones, right? Handphones, do we have handphones? We had handphones, but oh, yeah. not smartphones. Not smartphones, well, smartphones will really come later. Okay, so I, I, I yeah, so what's interesting about what Vernon is saying is that, uh, what's that? Yeah, yeah, those are our phones, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. G yeah, uh, GSM had only just been launched, if I may. Mean. What's the GSM? GSM is a smartphone, when everything became small. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. So, so technology is really part of the story that can be told. Um, but, okay, so we did the context. We did something of the, uh, of the beginnings, the, what uh, crystallized or pushed this thing forward. You give it some of the middle uh, in terms of the festivals and the actual, but we haven't got the details yet. We want to do that later. But let's talk about the end. The end. When does Artist Proactive come to an end? And in the blurb, we talk about the festival period. Um, there was, and you know, we just mentioned the fundraiser for Hisham that comes aside later because with the Reformasi protests, the crackdown, uh, especially the big crackdown with the arts activism. People don't know Hisham Maruddin Rais. Uh, he also made a film, uh, Dari Jamapoka, Manchester, somewhat later. But it was not yeah, actually. It was, cool, it, was his, it was a graduating show, right? It was a film he made as a grad, his graduating show. No, film. no. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. He, just, he just used that film for a long time after. But oh, really? Okay. So, so, so when does artist. No, he, he made it as a student work. Yeah. Mm. yeah. 
No, it comes up. Okay, well, okay, we'll, 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 okay. So we'll, we'll fight about this a little later. Um, but tell us about um, the end. Does, does, does uh, uh, Artist Proactive peter out? Does it get overtaken by something else? Is it transformed into something else? What happens? Okay, I can say that it kind of like petered out. There seemed to be like uh, artists individually started to feel quite empowered, I guess. Um, because I remember we were trying to, you know, keep it alive, but it was difficult. I mean, like people suddenly had other priorities and uh, yeah, it petered out. That's how, remember, that's how you remember it. Uh, what would, would you, can you think of a date or an event that kind of signaled the end of APA? Um, so, we did a couple of things after this, right? So, just so you, you remember that we had the question mark, the postcard, APA Fest. Um, we then organized in 2001 when Huchamudin Rise was taken in under the ISA, we actually organized the auction. It was called the Lelong. And Joko Katas as Judge Mental Singh and Harith Iskandar, you know, ran the auction. And so we sold these t shirts. Actually, the t shirt, I've got, a, I've got one t shirt. I don't know if you have it here. So we made these t-shirts, Nur Hanim Kairudin, Wong Hoi Chong and Sydney Tan designed three different t-shirts that were sold off, then they auctioned off the actual artwork. We raised quite a bit of money because Hisham had been taken in and he had cats, he had to pay his rent, there were all kinds of things, his life was disrupted, right? Uh, so that was that. Then we organized a couple of other things. When Baltimore Waltz, which um, Instant Cafe had staged, then got censored, Again, Artist Proactive got activated and we got about 200 plus signatures. We organized to meet with DBKL about it. We, you know, our, our statement was carried in all of the news. And eventually DBKL, I think there was, there was some change. I think DBKL was, you know, kind of relented on some cases, some things. Um, and then we were invited to the Guangzhou Biennale. Um, As APA. Yes, and Ho Chong made this happen really. I think it was, I think Guangzhou Biennale invited Ho Chong and then he kind of said, well, you know, bring these guys. So what we did was we had a, num a number of artists, including Fuad, in fact, uh, you know, who came and brought their work, um, Nadia Bad Mahaj, um, and then we also had performances by Joe Kidd at the Guangzhou Biennale, and that was quite interesting because it was kind of like quite a big deal. It was together with um, University, University Bangsa Utama, U Ubu, right? For UBU, those of you who know, which is another very important... Which is not a university, like, it's just a a it's an activist collective, as it were. But they used to give... Uh, uh, tuition to the kids in the, in the flats, right? That was in the cringy flats, that was one of the things that they did, right? No. I don't, well, I don't remember. Well, they had little discussions. It was really an excuse to come together, drink, and, uh, and, and no, no, and also oh, create a community. I think it was a little bit more. Yeah, there were intellectual There were intellectual activities, yeah. always. It actually, was quite Im it actually was quite impressive, if I may say so. And uh, I, I mean, I, I said that uh, the art, arts community kind of like kind of like went off after having been empowered, I, I think, by... But we registered. So Artist Proactive registered as yes. a syndrome Berhard, right? So it was in... I what think, year was that? Um, From the start? No, um, maybe two years after we... we maybe two years after, because we kind of were trying to get it... Not from the start. Did we do it from the start? From the start. Because we needed to be able to put the funds No, the, the festival was... The festival was... Like, when I applied for the permit for APA festivals under Zahim, Zahim's name, so we didn't have okay. an organization, okay. right? So we, we registered and then, as, as Vernon has said, it was impossible. It was really, as, as the, it, one of the administrators, it was really difficult. Every time there was a crisis, people would get activated. But in terms of really kind of organizing to do like systemic change in a way that, like, let's say the women's groups had done or yeah. the ways that the human rights game. groups, it was really difficult. Yeah. I don't think artists are anyway made for that. <laughs> I don't think so. Okay, so do you have a date for the end of our... I mean, is that, is that too much to ask? No, I, but I, I want to just kind of say that then the company... I, I then started Kakisani in 2001 and, and once, like Susie, myself, I think the people who were producers kind of moved on to other things. It was kind of difficult. Then Fami Fad yeah, Zil and and James took over the company. So they took over the company and tried to activate it. And again, the same thing, tried to get things going, but no. And so eventually they closed the company down. So I would say maybe by 2000, I left in 2003. So maybe by 2000 and, no, sorry. Yes, yeah, sorry. I think by 2005, 
the company, I think, was shut. I, I could be wrong, but I think by then. Okay. Uh, Vernon, how do you remember the end? I mean, when do you, did you stop sending out emailers and... Uh, uh, I I, I remember one particular meeting where, you know, it was me and James for Fami Fazil. I'm not sure if Amir was there, but we were really looking at each other going like, you know, how do, you know, this has so much of history, we need to keep it alive. Um, let's go away and think about this and see how. And, did, yeah, you, did you ever come back? I don't, I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't think so. They, they shut the company down, so for sure. Okay, yeah. well, you're going to hold up that t-shirt, are you? Okay, you know the, the, the 90s and the 80s are full of t-shirts. You could do a whole museum of activist t-shirts, actually. And, and that was clearly for the babies or some very small person. Oh, it's your size, is it? Sorry. Who <laughs> <laughs> wear baby tea like that? Okay so, okay, so we've got the whole history now. I, I mean, we've got an outline or a sketch of a history, I think. And I want to thank Vernon and Kathy for this. But, now it's okay. Now you know for, for you maybe a chance to uh, to ask uh, Kathy or Vernon um, you know about your thoughts, especially in terms of the idea of artists as com uh, as a community, artists responding to art, the, the effectiveness, the efficacy of art activism or artists in activist mode, as uh, expression that Vernon used. Any questions? Um, any comments? Can I get you the mic? We want to record this for posterity. Sorry, I remember that was our part. Uh, I'm Beverly. Sorry. Um, yeah, Beverly. Um, I remember that um, the, I get mixed up the postcards, the the uh, all the paraphernalia from the Upper Festival. I get a bit mixed up because Hoi Chong also made the work with the wigs, and then there was also paraphernalia. But a lot of it was also mixed up with protest um, stuff gathered from. Protest. So was APA actually ever part of the reformatory process as, as a group? I mean, the actual sort of street protests, was APA ever actually, no, it was only the festival. You mean, did we organize people to go to yeah, the street? Yeah, that kind of thing. No, there was but no... individually we went, but yeah. no. Right, okay, so there wasn't that and then part. Maybe some of us might be distributing, you know, the paraphernalia there, but, right, uh, so that's but we why never I went as a group, yeah. Okay, and, and then the other thing was you say the police came to the festival, to the, to the shows and the things, but, and then, but we also see there's quite a lot of um, uh, mainstream media uh, uh, coverage of the shows. So in the end, what was the public response and the, and the state response by the police? The, the, I think the Western press loved it, you know. But, but even Oikok Trend yeah. covered it in Star or Yeah. It, um, yeah. Um, well, it was, very, it was very well received. I mean, like, everything we did was filled up. If I remember correctly, I mean, yeah. You know, I think it's a, it's a it it tells you just how um, efficient and how how um, how big we were that you know that we got a lot of media, but we didn't really get a lot of repercussions. I think there were so many other bigger movements, right? I mean, you've got thousands of people in Tatara and Merdeka, mm. a little bunch of others, but we did have. I mean, there were two incidents I know for sure. Um, which was quite unusual. I think at Filmnet, which was also a cafe, and that was, you know, they were serving drinks and there was a, like a, I think that's where the poetry and some of the dance happened. And the police came and started questioning them about their liquor license, which was unusual because it'd been running for a long time. And one, one um, we also did a club event at one of those, on Talawi 3, one of those like small clubs. It was like a DJ spinning music. And I think the, the guy who was organizing it, I won't mention his name because he doesn't like to, I've reached out to him and he doesn't like to be associated with it, with it now anymore. But he, I believe, <laughs> they didn't have a license to put the DJ console on the, on the sidewalk, which if you know KL in the 1990s, all of this was done. And I understand that he spent an e a night in jail because of that. Mm -hmm. so, but yeah, I mean, I, I, we were a yeah. small arts group, right? Please share, it's all going to be recorded and, you know, um, anything? Oh, 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 the man in the back first, for gender equality and balance. Uh, as her. Um, do you think the space for artists, uh, I mean, the time that you're talking about, uh, I suppose the space uh, for political comment in, in art was quite limited. Uh, 
I presume it opened up somewhat in the years after that. Um, but now that Malaysia is at yet another political crossroads, do you see that space closing once again? I don't. I don't think the space was limited even before then. I, I don't. I, I think that there were. There've always been artists. Um, you know, 1984 here and now was staged. Um, so I, I. Yeah, Ho Chong's works were in the National Gallery. I don't think the space. You can plot incidents of censorship, but Instant Cafe was doing stuff. Uh, lots of different people. Anne Lee was doing stuff, right? Artists will always have, I think Malaysian artists, if I compare them to, let's say, Singapore, for example, I think Malaysian artists have always been very political. But sometimes, yeah, you feel like, you know, okay, suddenly there'll be a spark and there'll be a flash and a flashpoint, but things kind of go back to... Yeah, I mean, it, for people who don't remember, I mean, I remember being, uh, as I said, working for the Swaram and the human rights activists, how difficult it was to get a, a group of people to come together, how difficult it was for people. But reformacy as a period in Malaysian history exploded the potential. I mean, we went from saying, wow, we got 10 people come for a protest to people now the, the benchmark had moved to, to a thousand. You could get a thousand people together, people lined up to join Swaram. It, it was an extraordinary moment for Malaysian activism broadly, not, not just in the field of art. I mean, uh, this is one instance, uh, but yeah. Oh, Anne had a question or a comment. Yeah, yeah, I have. I have She's the one who does several. stuff that... Um, Kathy, okay. Does stuff. Okay, no, no, I, I wanted to, so you've prefaced this as being kind of like an unearthing, did you say? An excavation. An excavation, okay. Um, because it's, it does strike me that this is a rare occasion where you do talk about APA, you know. Um, I want to attest the fact that um, I'm also very close, I feel very close to it, so I can't think about being able to write a history about it or, you know, and place it, whether it was a small urban-based middle class thing and, and therefore it has no value or, you know, whatever place uh, uh, to put it in within a history, I don't feel able to do that because I was very closely involved. And so I, I want to be able to talk about some of that personal uh, involvement um, because, and attest to some of the comments that, that the two people say. So the fear, I think, is, is one thing. Uh, for me, the fear of being able to um, express and say things that you felt were against the government or, you know, whatever. I think at that time it was very prevalent. And what was different about APA, I think, was, to me anyway, was that it had a space, even though it was largely English language, yeah, and even though it did draw in others, it was largely English, that you could have people from different political points of view or different positions to take in relation to the government. So at the time, for example, I was a newsreader for RTM uh, TV2, and um, more righteous and, and rightful people were in the arts. My friends were not able to speak to me as a result of it, one, one particular playwright. But the point is that... Upper, because you were complicit with the system. Yes, 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 yes. Um, it's, it's, you know, some of us can't, can't afford to be too right, righteous about this. Or, you know, Kang Kang is a position that you take in relation to a lot of things. But, okay, so here, APA here was, it, I think you said gregarious. I, I felt that it was kind of, people had very different opinions sometimes about, uh, but what mattered was here, a deputy prime minister, you know, he had been sacked, and it felt like, uh, you know, in theory, you can sack anyone if, if it is, but this, this felt like it was a political thing to get rid of another deputy prime minister, because he disagreed about, you know, the, the financial uh, position to take. Um, so, and yet you were fearful. So I was one of the people who did not sign because I didn't feel I wanted my IC to be there. And anyway, as a newsreader, we all heard that we had special branch folders open for you anyway. Um, so all of that stuff. So when it became an, an issue of actually trying to commit yourself to this, I could find a place which was, okay, yes, I want, I want to be, I need to express artistically what this is about. So I could do that under APA, and um, with Mei Lin, for example, we wrote a piece called Sang Kan Chil, The Mouse Deer That Roared, as part of the theatre um, um, uh, yeah, component of, yeah. of, of the festival. Um, but I remember kind of like, 
in the middle of the rehearsals, you know, strange Fleur walks in. He's wearing kind of like a bush jacket. Uh, and, jo and Joe and Icy are giving away kind of like twigs, a special branch, you know, so, so you, everybody could have their very own special branch. So it worked very nicely to kind of, you know, <laughs> Uh, ease the tension in the room, even as you were kind of, you were aware of other people. Uh, uh, um, well, you were just you were doing your own part, and you could find a place under upper to do that. Um, I think for the other thing, and I think maybe individually artists were um, approached as a result of their involvement in upper. I mean, I know that when. Um, I came back to the office a few days after we, the performance had happened. Um, the, our administrator said, oh, there was an Inspector Nathan from Bukit Aman who asked if you can um, return call. Well, fuck that. I, I, <laughs> I, I stayed with, uh, as, as I had learned from a workshop from activists, an activist who had been detained during Operasi Lalang, that, you know, every good girl knows she takes her toothbrush and she stays in different places uh, so that she's not actually at home waiting like a sitting duck for when special branch or whoever come in at three o'clock in the morning. So I, you know, it, 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 it motivated me to, to not, I didn't want a return call. I never returned call. To, I mean, it could have been about a parking ticket. I don't know. But, you know, it was, it was something that, so the time then is something which is tense. And the, and the, the other th comment I want to make is around that I felt people could also get involved because this person was being, Sacked for what? For what he called himself despicable acts later. I mean, yes, you would call these things. But I think for there's certain irony around um, reading the news when you yourself would be identified uh, 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 with what is now called LGBTQ, but wasn't then. Uh, and so you feel kind of like torn between all these lovers of kind of how, where are your loyalties supposed to lie? And I think that um, the fact that I think it was 6 p.m. Nobody wanted to go with the news that he was going to be sacked until RTM had done it. Tamil News at 6 o'clock was the first to announce. And I believe that there was actually a clipping, because I remember seeing it, of, of um, Mahadeh having to explain what were these acts. And he actually mimics what looks like, well, not Felacio, but I don't know what it is. It's, it's um, uh, how do I call it, huh? Um, it's a four-letter word, but it's you use it with your right hand, and it's close to you. <laughs> self-love. Okay, self-love is good. So, the, on, on, on... Frottage. Was it... Was it, was it if, if anyone can find that clip, and oh. of course these things will be recycled, on Tamil News at 6 p.m., Dr. Mohadir displayed what he felt was despicable because a journalist did not understand what were these despicable acts. Um, so, and of course, subsequent, there were these, you know, delightful news around exactly what these acts were. So, the, for yeah, the first I, time... I was accused of uh, anal penetration at the same time pleasing his lover. This is bad, okay? Don't please, ever please your lover. It's, it's almost criminal in this country. Well, I think there was some difficulty around the phrasing of it. So, so I mean, so that begins this kind of where we have played out on our, you know, uh, headlines, uh, this, this whole discourse which continues with us today in, very, in a very interesting way. I don't know, I mean, that's another part of the angle of the but history. Would any artworks take up the question of sexuality or, or sex? And, and this is one of my questions that we often talk about access to space and freedom of expression or the responses. We rarely talk about the quality of those responses. We rarely interrogate. Fuck off. <laughs> I know, I think it's very important to talk about <laughs> I mean, what it comes out of it, of that period, that is of lasting value that we continue to think of as having uh, displayed an understanding of the underlying dynamics of Malaysian society, of Malaysian politics, what works of lasting value? And I think it's a reasonable question. Uh, yeah, I think it's a reasonable question, but I won't answer it. You will answer I think. Again, you know, I'm, I'm not, yeah, maybe I'm just kind of, you know, trying to make it sound a lot better than it was. One, I think really the fear was there. I don't want to downplay the fact that we were scared. But we were also very young and very angry, right? Um, I remember, so just to speak quickly about your fear, the, um, there was, 
there was a lot of messages, emails being posted about, oh, this thing's going to be cancelled, that thing's going to be cancelled. And in, in the end, we instituted a thing that only a few of us could post on the e-group because people were just panicking, right? So there was a lot of fear. Um, so I, I think the other thing is that you will see in, in one of the, I think the orange little leaflet which says you have 10 minutes, the you have 10 minutes obviously comes from what the FRU was saying to the protesters, right? You have 10 minutes to disperse before which we will release the water cannons because they were not using tear gas. They didn't use tear gas during, during Reformasi, if, if I remember correctly. They did. No, they did. They did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. in fact. Hands in yeah, they were actually my cans. I picked them up and donated them to Hoi Chong. <laughs> Your cans, huh? Yeah, my cans. I've, this was uh, the, uh, the, when the protesters, we went to uh, the Prime Minister's... Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, I picked up very hot. So the, the You Have 10 Minutes came from there, but you'll see that all the artists, the actors, the writers had their identity card numbers next to it. And that was a form of activism on our part because people were so scared. But then because they were scared, they said, no, we have to, we can't hide, we have to give our identity card numbers so that we're saying we're not scared. So for me, it's modeling, right? It's modeling, it's not about the artwork, but it's modeling that. in a way, a kind of behavior. I think of Syed Ahmad Jamal, who was afraid because he was one of the artists that was, I think, it was not like people were brave, people were scared, right? We were all scared, but I mean, he, he, he put a work in. There were Sulaiman Issa, all these like major artists who yeah. had a lot to lose, you know, because they were part of, you know, they were being, you know, you know they were being celebrated, right? By, by the state at that point. So yeah, I think I mean, that's like, modeling like, behavior for us, I think that's important. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, like, for instance, at the actor studio down in, down in um, uh, Putra Plaza, giving us the space for the, for the theater. I mean, like, when I, when I think about it, uh, people did go out on a limb to support what they felt was necessary. And that, to me, was actually quite inspiring. Okay. Uh, more questions from the oh, young man in the yellow and then the young man in the black. Again, for some color. Hi, uh, my name is uh, KK. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, the first question is uh, In this uh, era, does the fear still prevalent? And the second question is uh, Will APA be revived again? Okay, thank you very much. I'll take your question as well. Just mention your name before. before. I'll just give them. Hello, hi, I'm Zikri. So, um, um, maybe I, I can ask the question about the position of non-artists in this particular group because you mentioned about artists proactive, but then again, because in this particular moment, you mentioned about some of us like, you know, just go to the street and just protest, but I would love to know more about how does the connotation of being a non-artist, if there is any in your particular group, and then what kind of network that actually transpire from this uh, artist proactive um, as a collective. Is there any continuation of those particular um, network? Because I do believe, for example, like you did mention about how it does come with the judicial crisis and then from Obus Lalang and everything. So what comes afterward? And then uh, the third question is like, you did mention about how, uh, Renan, Renan, you did mention about how you feel like something is not right because you didn't really proceed with the APA anymore. So, do you perceive it as a failure that it didn't really like have any continuation after that? How, how do you perceive it? Do you perceive the whole project as a failure because there's no more continuation after that? Thank you. Okay, just to start with the last question first. Um, no, I don't think it was a failure. Uh, I, I, I'm very happy to have been part of the history and uh, it just seemed like as though uh, people, the artists, the arts community and, and individual artists had to a certain extent been empowered and so they all started to go off on their own little tangents of kind of activism. Uh, that's what I feel. Um, for me actually working the e-media, they began to get hold of how to grapple with this new monster who would actually be able to help them, you know, get their work out and involve people and participate with the community at large. And so I think that was a stepping stone um, in terms of, uh, um, you know, uh, familiarizing them with, with e-media, e electronic media. Um, the, the other thing about you saying uh, non-artists within the artist proactive movement, uh, we had a lot of enablers who were not artists, 
who were art supporters, who were allies. Um, yeah, and uh, even the audience were allies to a certain extent in, in ennobling what we were doing, making it feel like we were, you know, what we were doing was worthwhile. Um, so yeah, the uh, non-artist allies were just as important, you know. Some of the volunteers, for example, there was someone who was a producer from Astro, um, there was a doctor, medical doctor, um, yeah. yeah, remember? Um, there, was, there were a bunch of people who were volunteers doing different things, manning, you know, things and so yeah, yes. Yeah, quite a yeah, number, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but your question about... Um, Do you remember any names? Uh, I don't know if, yeah, Azalina. Azalina was an astro producer, Dr. Soraya was a medical doctor. Um, Monita, well, Maya Tan Abdullah, who is now a performer, but at that point at she worked for yeah, a Gilded Meter yeah. or something. You know, so there were people who were not from the arts. That okay. Um, I think there was also a question of, uh, of uh, f fear today and also whether APA might be revived. Is that the question? Okay. I think the fear will always be there. I mean, like, listening to Kathy talk and, and Anne talk about the fear, um, for me, that wasn't so prominent, but then I was at a point in my life where maybe I didn't care anymore. I just wanted, you know, to, I don't know, make a difference, if that sounds kind of weird, but uh, yeah. But I don't remember me being fearful. Uh, I remember me being fearless, but like I say, it, I was at a stage in my life where I could afford to be fearless. Uh, yeah. Heroic, maybe. Can I, can I answer your, your question? I mean, I'm going to... Try and I think you asked if, um, you know, what's the after effects of APA, right? I, I, I think that that's maybe something for researchers to kind of tell, we, you know. But I do remember Mark Tay kind of saying to me once that, I think he was too young for APA. He was very young. But I remember him saying that he was quite inspired by it. I think he'd heard about it through his lecturer, uh, Mohan. Yeah, you know. I mean, I don't, live in, I don't live in Malaysia anymore, and I think that for me, uh, it takes a particular kind of personality to, to, be, to organize and to be very democratic, because it's very much, APA was very much about consensus, so you've got so many different people you have to get consensus from. I remember designing the poster, and I was going to kill everyone in that room. <laughs> because I, you know, I'm, you know so, and, and then when I started at uh, Kakisani, I felt that personally my, my activism continued through then and I could be a little bit of a dictator because I had a, a partner and we ran it the way we wanted to run it, right? So it was less consensus. So I don't have that. I really know that I, I really don't have that personality. Yeah, yeah I, I, think, I think it needs to get to that kind of like crucible point, right? To bring people together and to be able to galvanize towards a single, singular vision and to be effective. It needs to have that. I mean, activism is, is, is not yeah. difficult, but I think organizing structures for activism is difficult. Yeah. And? Oh, the revival question. Okay, so, yeah, we, we have about eight minutes left. I mean, do you want to take that revival? I mean, is there any point in reviving APA with the same identity? Or, I mean, now we have over the Balai uh, um, censorship issue with uh, Fuad Osman, um, Change.org was used, you know, various platforms. It, it, it seems, I guess is because, it necessary to have something I guess like an artist union or something? Well, I, I guess because it was founded by, really, a whole group of people and not one singular vision, uh, I don't think it will ever be revived. Unless those, that same group of people are at least some of them get together and say they want to do it. Um, yeah. yeah. I think that, you know, you have things like Anna Alam from the 1960s, right? I mean, you know, so people, you know, these are movements that are very much of that time, and then people do try and revive it. I mean, I, I, I really think that right now, our voices should really be quiet. Yeah. It really is a, a younger generation that has to decide. Oh, no. I think the spirit of our This is another voice. debate. Why? I don't see why. We're not that old. First of all, I think it's giving place, right? It's giving, giving space to younger people. Why not? Well, younger people will take that space, I think. Okay, so now we come. Any, any more questions before I, I you know, kind of uh, 
ask uh, both Vernon and Kathy to wrap up. Are there any any questions? I mean, it could be very simple. I mean, a, a, or a comment. No. If any of you were there, <clears throat> I'd love to hear what you have to what you remember. Yeah, and I think maybe that's something to be. That might be the project now to do the kind of historical excavation and retrieval, uh, if nothing else, as a way of um, putting in, putting into a in single place uh, all the, all the material. I, I must say, I, I like the the question of failure. I I, I think failure is very, to use a fancy term, generative. Uh, you know, and I think we can look at failure. Uh, you know, as a way of um, kind of learn, in, in learning lessons about the, the future, wait, 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 wait. So, so for the future. I I use I use sticking on the word failure onto Appa in the because it did not survive. Um, that's a good question. I. I just like the idea of of looking I, it through I, I the lens. I mean, I don't know if you need to come to an assessment of it, but I, I do think when we say what is it that the group wanted to achieve, uh, what did it set out to do, uh, did it build community? Was the coming together uh, an ephemeral one? You know, was it already because in fact artists don't necessarily work collectively, uh, and some artists even less so than others, uh, and so on and so forth, right? What is specific to the arts community in the way that its life world is organized that either predisposes them or not to collective action of this sort, you know? Maybe it could only have been driven by the passions of the time, yeah. which were national in, in character, right? So I think coming back to your thing about asking if the art was good, right? And yeah, maybe, um, maybe, the, the, maybe for artists, be, I mean, for those artists who have a political kind of interest, then you already have a medium by, through which you can actually make those contributions, right? More so than, let's say, an accountant or a newsreader, right? You know, you, so you already, have, you already yeah. have a particular kind of, you're in a place to make those kinds of interventions. Um, so, you know, I think that maybe that's one reason why, you know, these collectives don't last. They come together because there's a flashpoint and you need something a bit bigger than your own artwork, right? Um, yeah, maybe So there was no manifesto. Was there a manifesto oh, produced? Yeah, there was, was there a manifesto. manifesto. Okay, so the manifesto is what we flashed. Yeah. We but have see, a picture like of it. The manifesto wasn't... Founding manifesto, it was called. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't conceived by a single person. So there was no single person ownership. So that is why I say... APA will only revive if several members together. It can't be one single person, you know, because it was a collective. Okay, okay so we have um, sort of time for closing remarks. I've been told by organizers to end it. Ah, you want to say something? Oh, yeah, read the, oh, read the manifesto. Uh, uh, okay. um, I'll read it in Malay, shall I? Okay, so kami percaya bahawa sekali lagi masanya sudah tiba bagi komuniti penggiat, uh, penggiat seni di Malaysia untuk bersama-sama mengambil peranan yang lebih gigih serta proaktif dalam membayar, membangunkan satu masyarakat yang lebih terbuka untuk negara kita tanpa sebarang ke, ke hu, sorry kekhawatiran atau uh, ganjaran. Melalui persembahan, penerbitan, pameran, tayangan, bengkel, kempen iklan dan serta lain-lain cara untuk menggalakkan um, kebebasan ekspresi dan perhubungan bagi mereka dari golongan seni untuk mendorong pengaliran idea dan maklumat yang bebas untuk memperakaunkan bahawa rakyat Malaysia mempunyai kebijaksanaan untuk menentukan sesuatu cara, secara sendiri dan sewajarnya digalakkan berbuat demikian um, September 1998 So it's, an, uh, it's a manifesto for an open society, is it? Great. Okay, uh, I'd like to, at this point in time, I think if that, uh, that wraps up the discussion, uh, if you know of anybody who's involved in, the, in Artist Proactive and you want to get them to kind of plug into this, is there any way for, are we, are we taking this conversation any further, Rahel? Okay, so 
Rahel's committed a million ringgit to, if you didn't hear her, to, uh, to this project of, uh, of uh, archive for <laughs> the APA moment. The Five Arts Center has an archive uh, program, uh, pro archive website, <laughs> and I think that some of this material will probably go on there as well, which is a free public access website. Right. So if you know anybody actually who does have material, uh, please get in touch with um, Rahel. Uh, I'll, be, I'll furnish you with her personal number after this show. No, I'm not kidding. Okay, I'd like to thank Kathy Rowland again, founder of Arts Equator, uh, which is a brilliant, brilliant website, uh, also uh, of uh, kakisani.com in the past, and Vernon Imam, who is a, a Vernon Adrian Among, who is a, a dear old friend and also a former TV broadcaster and all about Surani activists. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Rahel Joseph, director of the Ilham Gallery, for putting this Ilham conversation together. I'd like to thank myself for being here on time and uh, moderating the session. Thank you so much, Sheridan. <laughs>